So that's how the intensity, meaning your load, remember, calisthenics, your body weight is your intensity. However much you could rep in a given movement with your body weight, that's what the modality of training you're gonna be focusing on. So all levels can try this out. Up, line them up, line them up, knock them down. Yeah. They said it was a grind. They said it takes time, yeah, I know. I guess they were in line. Every time I try to climb, they cut the rope. I fell straight to the bottom, got problems, I don't really wanna talk about them, no. I've been down this road too many times to be afraid, I close my eyes when I walk down it. What's going on, YouTube? You're back with the Prez out here in Juniper Park today. Today's the start of a new week. But this week, we're doing it a little something different beating off the path from my normal routine where you see me training shoulders and back together on day one. So typically for the last about 10 days, my routine has been scattered. I haven't really had a set training schedule. And if you watch the lives, I've been doing more of that max effort training. And actually the last video I posted when you guys saw me doing weighted pulls at 120 pounds. The last couple weeks, the workouts have been very sporadic. Like I said, all had a purpose, but I was really going into the training session trying to hit a goal and that was it. I wasn't trying to kill my body, letting the hands recover and just looking to PR on certain movements and then back off, get back to it the next day. So today we're back in the park and to be honest, it's the coldest day of the year so far. It's about 32 degrees out right now. So this routine is gonna be circuit style. We're gonna be moving around. So we're gonna try to keep the intensity up in terms of the break periods and the amount of movements we're doing in sequence, right? So we're gonna be hitting three movements as a superset full upper body workout. But we're gonna have the 70 pound kettlebell out today and we're gonna be working strength, hypertrophy, and more on that hypertrophy slash endurance rep ranges for all the exercises that we're doing. So full upper body, that means we're gonna be tapping into shoulders, chest, and back. We're gonna be hitting all three muscle groups. And again, one focus will have strength training in it, meaning lower volume reps. One will be more hypertrophy in that six to 12 rep range. And one movement will be more in that hypertrophy slash endurance rep range where we're hitting 15 to about 20 plus reps each set. So like always guys, you're gonna see standard warm up. We got the resistance bands out. And it's very important, especially on a cold day like today, make sure you warm up the joints, the tendons, get blood flowing to those areas. You don't wanna get on that bar and be stiff. So it's not only get, we're not only gonna do an upper body warm up today, we're gonna hit a full body warm up where we're tapping into some lower body work too. Again, just to get blood flowing throughout the body, warm everything up. All right, so we did overhead squat, 10 reps. Again, just to get some blood moving around the whole body. Now we're gonna get into our typical band warm up on the bar, tricep extensions and some curls, working flexion and extension of the elbow joint. All right guys, quick warm up. Again, warm up the tendons, specifically the shoulder and the elbow, no matter where the movement's coming from, whether it's pull or push, there's gonna be extension and flexion of the elbow joint. Shoulder joint as well is gonna get used, so you really wanna warm them up. And we tapped into the lower body with those overhead squats, just to get blood flowing, increase the heart rate a little bit. All right guys, getting into the routine. So for the first set, I got the 20 pound vest on. This is gonna be more of a warm up set slash activation set, just to prime the muscles for the actual working sets to come. Like I said, I'm gonna be doing the routine pretty much fully with the 70 pound kettlebell today. But for one movement, we're gonna be wearing the vest for that exercise. So like I said, it's gonna be full upper body. So that means we're tapping at the shoulders, chest, and back. So typically, typically when you guys see me training full body or upper body for that matter, I typically train with blood flow, right? So I like to train shoulders first, then chest, then back. But today, like I said, it's gonna be a little circuit style. One, because it's cold out here, we wanna keep warm. And two, we just wanna increase the work capacity and the intensity and get a lot of work done in a short amount of time. I don't wanna be out in the cold too long. So the routine is gonna be mainly done with the 70, but the, it's gonna be pyramid style. But the first warm up set, we got the 20 pound vest on and we're just gonna be working isometric holds and a little bit of repetition. So we're gonna start 20 pound vest, just back to the wall, handstand hold, 
15 seconds, really prime and warm up the shoulders. From there, we're gonna come into a 10 second dead hang, five pull-ups, then we're gonna go to the dip bar, hit a 10 second negative, and about five dips. So we're gonna hit, like I said, shoulders, back, then chest. Typically, I would do shoulders, chest, and back, but to keep the movement patterns balanced, we're gonna go push, shoulder press, pull for the pulls, and then back to push. So push, pull, push, instead of push, push, pull, give the push muscles a little break, and again, keep that balance more even. So first set, warm up, activation set, a lot of isometrics, let's get it. So guys, remember, isometrics and static holds are gonna help you guys connect to the working muscles. It's gonna put the muscle under stress without any joint movement. So you guys are gonna feel where you have to be when doing isometric and statics. And remember, the goal for the warm up is never to fatigue. So you don't wanna hold these positions for too long. Again, just to feel the muscles working and activating. Now listen, when you guys are doing your isometric handstand holds, back to the wall, I want you guys to focus on elongating your body, trying to stretch your body out. So that means you're pushing your hands into the floor, which is almost elevating the shoulder blades out of the socket as if you're pointing your toes to the sky. So you're pushing down and pushing your toes to the sky. So opposite forces, really trying to stretch out and elongate that body. You're gonna really feel a lot of core activation and stability coming into play. Like I said, next is the pull movement. Dead hang to a few reps. Just the easy five reps and then right to the dip bar for another isometric set where we're gonna hold the negative. And if there's anyone who's struggling to feel their chest work when doing dips, I highly recommend practicing these 90 degree negative holds go down slow that's key you do not want to rush the negative you want to make sure you control the descent and you're going to really feel that chest stretch and then hold it Remember in that, that isometric position it's cold out here it's about 33 degrees out so you want to really make sure you're warmed up you get blood flow to the muscles without fatiguing them before we get into the working sets i'll see you at set one all right guys getting into the first working set Remember, I told you in the intro, we're gonna be tapping into strength training, hypertrophy work, and more hypertrophy and endurance for each given muscle group. Now, what determines whether we're hitting strength work, hypertrophy work, or more hypertrophy endurance, what determines that is the intensity. Remember, I explained to you guys, intensity refers to the load that you're lifting. So, how are we gonna hit strength training work for our shoulders? We're gonna keep the 20 pound vest on, and we're gonna go for handstand push-up back to the wall. With this 20 pound vest on, the load, meaning the intensity, I now have 20 pounds added to my body weight. So when I'm hitting these reps, I'm typically gonna be falling in that one to five rep range, which is considered more strength work. As soon as we're done with the handstands, we're gonna take the 20 pound vest off and we're gonna strap on the tw and we're gonna strap on the 70 pound kettlebell. Now remember, I said hypertrophy, and then we're gonna get into hypertrophy and endurance work. When we get on that bar for pulls, when I'm pulling with that 70 pounds, my reps are gonna fall probably within that six to eight rep range, maybe six to 10 rep range, depending on where I'm at, right? So that's gonna be required, that intensity, meaning that 70 pound kettlebell, that load is making me work in that hypertrophy rep range. If I was a newbie and just getting good at pull-ups, your body weight would be the equivalent intensity to get you working in that six to 12 rep range. And then when we go on to dips for the third movement, when I have that 70 pound strapped up, I'm gonna be able to hit in that higher rep range typically in that 15 to 20 plus rep range, which is still working on hypertrophy, but tapping into a little more endurance. And especially it's gonna be more endurance because it's gonna be a third exercise in the superset, so we're really building up work capacity as well. So it's gonna be a pyramid style set, and the, what's gonna determine how many sets we do is the amount of pull-ups we hit on set one. So if I get on that bar and hit seven pull-ups for set one, that means the goal is to hit seven down to one for the remaining set. So seven sets total, set two, I'll go for six pull-ups, five, four, three, two, one. And as we get to the lower numbers of the pyramid style, I'll be so fatigued that now that 70 pound load for the pulls will be more strength training as well because I'll be hitting lower numbers due to the fatigue that I accumulated up during the routine. Dips, I plan on keeping in the higher rep range regardless. I plan on keeping them around 15 to 20 and maybe 10 to 15 towards the lower end of the sets. 
but the number of sets is going to be determined by how many pulls we hit on set one. So first working set one, remember we're starting with the vest on for handstands, going for one to five handstand push-ups. I kept the handstand to three. I could have pushed out five, but five would have been max effort and it would have fatigued me too much for the next set. So, I'm gonna drop the 20 and we'll go right to our pose. So, 70 on. Whatever number we hit here determines the total number of sets we're hitting. out and got nine but I didn't want to fatigue again now right to the dip bar let's go And look, I overestimated the number of dips I was gonna get to hit. Cap to the 13, I could have pushed out 15 again. We do not wanna fatigue and go max effort on any one of these sets. It will force you to have a drop off for the remaining sets. So you wanna be able to hit now the required number of pull-ups each step of the pyramid down and keep this dip number pretty much the same. So we're gonna rest two minutes in between each set right now and right back to the handstands. So we got Seven more sets to go. Let's get it. Let's go. Set two. <laughs> See, on the court two. So remember, we're pyramiding down now on the pull-ups. Every set that we get into the pull-ups, because the break periods are going to stay at two minutes and not give me much, enough time to refresh every set, the reps are going to get harder and harder. So pyramid style is very effective. Eight set one, now we're on seven reps. Let's go. Ah. Tough seven, guys. Let's go. Look, I'm capping those dips at 10. Still primarily hitting height, again, hypertrophy rep ranges for the pulls and the dips. But why we're tapping into endurance now is the amount of total workload and how long the set's taken, right? So in order to go through the handstands, re-strapping up into the 70, getting into the pulls, then moving over to the dips and hitting your reps, sets take long. You guys can see I'm exasperated. The heart rate is up. So we're just, it's anaerobic work, but you're tapping in to more cardiovascular endurance training with the amount of workload that you're hitting in the given set. So, two sets down, we still gotta hit six more rounds. Let's get it. Let's go, third set. Ah. Woo. Two right there. 
right there. Almost maxed me out. Let's go, guys. Six reps. Get it. Let's get it. Seventy plus Tim's. guys fourth set so let you guys know you may not see set five six and seven i'll definitely get set eight in but look it's cold out here i told you it's about 33 degrees when you're filming with an iphone in the cold that battery is running real fast so i pretty much went through almost 70 percent of my battery life in five sets right now so i'm gonna hit this set four for you record it let the phone chill out for sets five six and seven and i'll see you at the last set And remember guys, doing these exercises back to back to back in superset fashion dramatically increases the intensity of right, each exercise. So I pose getting into, back into that uh, strength rep range now. Why? Because now the break periods have been consistent two minutes, so it's catching up to me. Remember, break periods have a great deal have to, that relate to intensity. The shorter the breaks, the harder the workout's gonna break. Remember, if I was taking longer breaks, I'd be able to hit probably continuous sets of eight. If you guys watch my last video talking about training for max effort, max intensity, there's no way you can do it with two minute breaks. You need to take long breaks. Let's go. Hitting the 10 consistent on the dips, they're the hardest part of the routine right now. Getting a consistent 10 reps. All right guys, so this is set six. You missed set five because I put the phone down and I pops came, so he's here to record me. So I'm gonna record set six, put it down for set seven, and then I'll record again the final set eight. So all you did was miss four pulls on that last set. So again, handstands, now we're gonna be on three pulls and dips, let's get it.
still catching the 10 dips each set. So that was the sixth set, I told you, eight total sets. Set seven, I'm not gonna record. That's gonna be a set with just two pull-ups. Set eight, the final set, you'll see me at it. Let's go. All right, guys, set eight, last set. You didn't see set seven, but when we got to the pulls, we kept the 20 pound best on, so we only got the two reps, and with the 70, it would've been pretty easy. So, staying with the handstands, we're gonna do 90 pound pulls for one rep, then drop the vest and finish off with dips for the last set. Let's go. Up. Keeping the vest on, we got one pull rep only. Really keeping it in that strength rep range now, because I could definitely hit probably sets of five at this point with just the 70. So to make it more strength focused, we're keeping the 20 on, 90 pounds, last rep, last set. Let's go. I'm gonna drop the 20 for the dips because the dips are the hardest part of the workout right now. Remember guys, I'm keeping the dip reps at 10. So they're consisting of the most volume right now. So the two minute break period is consistent, but the dip work alone is taking them up the majority time of the set. So I'm getting good break period for the pull and the handstands, but the dip break is not as long as the others. So last set guys, let's go. Woo. All right guys, that was eight rounds. Circuit slash pyramid routine. Full upper body, hitting shoulders, back, and then chest. Now, this is how I want you guys to focus and realize how rest periods can be considered adding intensity and that will vary the intensity of the workout, right? So typically, let's just say, if you guys watched the last routine when I was doing 120 pound pulls, I was taking 10 minute breaks in between each set, going up to each set fully recovered still not catching one rep, right? Now let's say I was doing sets of 70 pound pulls. Set one, we caught eight reps, right? If I would've took a consistent three minute breaks and only did pull-ups, I would probably get four to five sets consistently of the eight reps, right? But because we did super set work, adding different muscle groups back to back to back, as well as cut down the break periods, the intensity, meaning the load, became harder and harder as the sets went on. If you're breaking, and I would've hit five sets of handstand push-ups first with three to five minute breaks in between, I probably would've hit consistent sets of three to five reps for all five sets. Same thing goes for pulls, and when it came to dips, if I was taking three to five minute breaks, I probably would've hit on that 12 to 20 rep range every set, because I would've been fully recovered each set, and it would've just been dip-focused chest work, right? So that's how break periods are a great way to modify the intensity, right? So if you guys, let's just say for instance, you guys get real strong at 70 pound pulls and you could do five sets of 10 reps with three minute breaks, right? Two to three minute breaks. You don't have any other weight to load up. 70 is the heaviest weight you could go to. Instead of trying to do sets of 11, you could stay doing sets of 10, but to make that those sets harder, instead of focusing on two to three minute breaks, try doing 10 reps with a 90 second break and try to see how many sets you could get consistently at that, build up, strength with that break period. It's all gonna be varied intensity depending on the rep ranges without having to increase the load. Remember, intensity refers to load, but you can manipulate a load by one, slowing it down, one, decreasing the rest times. Another way is adding pause reps. I've told you guys this many times. It's very, there's many ways to vary intensity with the load. So I hope you guys enjoyed this routine. We tapped into strength training, high, specific hypertrophy work, and more of the hypertrophy endurance work towards the end of the sets with the dips. And this can be done by any level. It's basic movements, handstands, pull-ups, and dips. Basic movements that everyone should master and they, could, they should stay consistent in the routine and practice getting better and better and stronger and stronger at them. That's how you're gonna progressively overload. That's how you're gonna constantly make muscle gains and progress in your calisthenics journey. Same thing as if you were in the gym and focused on weightlifting. You guys would wanna keep the staple movements bench press, deadlifting, squatting in your routine all the time. Same thing if you guys are focusing on calisthenics, you guys gotta keep the pulls, the dips, 
the chin ups, the handstands in there and just get better and better at them. So this can be done by all levels. The intensity of your body weight varies is what, what, what determines the load that you're doing, right? And determine the rep range that you guys are gonna be doing. So if this was all body weight, if it was a body weight only routine for me, I would probably be hitting hypertrophy rep range for the handstand push-ups, more hypertrophy to endurance for the pulls, and straight endurance for the dips, because the dips I would be hitting over 30 a clip pretty much every set. The pulls I would probably keep in that 15 to 20 plus rep range, and the handstands would probably stay around that six to 10 rep range if it was body weight only. So that's how the intensity, meaning your load, remember, calisthenics, your body weight is your intensity. However much you could rep in a given movement with your body weight, that's what the modality of training you're gonna be focusing on. So all levels can try this out, beginners, intermediate, advanced. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a comment in the comment section. I always answer you guys back. Like the video, it helps the algorithm out, guys. Share this, let's keep growing this channel. And like always, guys, peace out. Bar Naturals. For a die, I'm top three. For a die, I'm top three. For a die, look.